Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service, jbiztechvilly.com. And as you can see here, calmness for the Jewish press. Right, and I'm enjoying all of that. And I also have a, a column near Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. But we're going to take a break from government. Today. All right, that's good. We're going to good. talk about a social service agency that's in Albany. That's a lot and, nicer. Isn't and it? our nice. guest today is Lisa Galley, who's the Project 5 coordinator at Jewish Family Services of Northeastern New York. Welcome to the Jewish View, Lisa. Thank you very much for having me. It's so good to see you. First thing, what is Project 5? Well, Are you asking for $5? Well, no, well, for, first I want to ask her how long have you been doing this as a coordinator? I've only been there a little bit over a year. Oh, I came the end of February 2015. And you're living the dream. This is I'm great. living the you know, I've had multiple previous jobs, and I love this one. Well, I saw that. So anyway, we'll get to that later, but tell us about Project 5, and what are you coordinating? <laughs> Project 5 is a volunteer service, and we provide transportation for Jewish senior citizens. And in what, you know, what are some of the criteria that you look for I presume a good driving record. Exactly. <laughs> you got to be over 18. <laughs> you have to be over 18. You have to be compassionate with senior citizens. You and can't, you need you, to love to drive. <laughs> and, and you can't be impatient. No. You have to, have, you have to take your meds, I'll say. You have to take your, your well, patient hopefully, pills. <laughs> hopefully no meds. <laughs> no, you know, the patient pills, right. the, the figurative, you right. know. And, uh, well, where do seniors want to go? Where, I mean, what were some of the things that they, have, they feel and need? Hey, I want to go there, help me out. They want to go to the JCC. The JCC has lots of programming for senior citizens. They, um, some of the area shuls have different programming that they want to go to. They want to go to lunch with friends. They want to go um, to doctor's, off, doctor's visits, dentist. Are they only, Things like that. can the, the person who takes advantage of your transportation, uh, does it, do they have to be Jewish and how do you check? They do have to be Jewish. And how do you check? We really can't. We're, we just go by honesty. <laughs> okay. Because and most of them are. I mean, most people are honest and... I mean, we have you know. some families who have names like O'Brien and other names that you wouldn't know that were Jewish and... Well, we ask them what shul they belong to. Okay. Uh, I'm unaffiliated, you know. You know so. Is it matter well, also criteria of money? Hey, man, you have the money, take a taxi, or no? You don't ask that. We don't no. ask that. If um, and you reimburse for mileage. We reimburse the drivers for mileage. For the passengers, it's there's a fee scale for whether they're within town, if they're traveling within town, their right. town or environment, Envi municipality. or right, right, or if they're like, let's say, if they live in Colony and they come to Albany, it's different than if they just stay in Colony. What's different? So the fee scale. Oh, okay. So there's basically three different zones. So within your town, how much? It's five dollars one way, ten dollars round trip. Oh, okay. If you're leaving your town, going to another town, but within the same county, uh, county it's. $10 one way, 15 round trip. If you leave the county, let's say you go to Saratoga or Rensselaer, or I'm sorry, Schenectady yeah. or Rensselaer, it's $15 and $20. So it must be very hard to coordinate it. For example, I know that my wife, even though she's on the board of the Jewish Family Service, your parent organization, she does volunteer. So she says, well, there's someone in Del Mar, and they want to go, like you say, inside the city, or a few miles away, you can't ask them to walk. Right. You know, so you're right there, but that must be a real coordination. Uh, talk about coordination over here at the beginning, coordinating. That must be, you know, you're here, i got a volunteer here, and, you know, you don't want to go crisscrossing from Del Mar. You go to Colony, and the driver from Colony could pick up someone in Del Mar. It must be a real logistical nightmare sometimes. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that it we can have, be. I try to find a driver that's close to the passenger. Mm -hmm. If how many not, then how many drivers are on your list that you can choose from? Right now, we have about sixteen. Sixteen. So that's not such a nightmare because you know. I mean, you can in your own mind. I mean, you can imagine. You, I mean, I've juggled more than that, and you know. I, well, it it sounds like it's a lot, no, but when they're when you have. Three people going to doctor's appointments at the same time. 
Yeah. Some people will only drive on Mondays. Some people can only oh. drive on weekends. Okay. Some people can. Some people are still working, so they're driving evenings or weekends only. Yeah. So, what's the criteria for some for a senior to take advantage of this? Because on your website you have some, you have the criteria noted. I just want to hear you. Uh, Basically, Jewish and over sixty years old. No, but like they, they could, they could be able. It's something about no longer able to drive or drive at night, and you know. So that's one criteria. You could it's, that's able not to a, drive, but need an occasional ride. It's not criteria. Oh. I mean, we have people that drive, and but then, if they're going to a doctor's appointment or something like that, and they're, they're uncomfortable, they're not sure of their driving skills, they'll call me and ask for a ride. Uh -huh. Well, sometimes I know even with young people, you have a procedure, and right. they just right. say, hey, don't drive afterwards for doing this or an eye test, right. don't drive. Right. So especially a senior citizen goes to an eye doctor. Hey, you know, I, you know, they give you something of fluid in the eyes, and or they go to the oncologist. They're nervous. The yeah. cardiologist. They're, you know, it's there's many different reasons. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're on a new medication and they don't want to drive because they don't know the effects of the medication. Yeah. No, no, I, that's good. That's, that's good information. I'm just not. Yeah. You know, we're just having a conversation. It's right. not. Okay. <laughs> um, so, and then you have like uh, testimonies of people who really enjoyed the experience either as a driver or as someone who's been driven. And that's a big testament to you. Uh, it's a to the very, yeah. very rewarding experience. Yeah. Uh, do you have issues? Like, you know, we all know about how seniors can complain. <laughs> not do too you? many. No, not, not too many. Not too many. I mean, I uh, had, in all the time that I've been doing, it's only been a year, but there was maybe one or two complaints. And it's basically because the driver was late. Uh -huh. You know, one driver, he still works. Yeah. So he couldn't get out of work when he thought he could. Right. So getting to the passenger, he was about 10 minutes late. Uh, well, I That's know. a big crime over here. My it's, mother lived up here. Uh, she's in Philadelphia now for a good reason. <laughs> I just, <laughs> my, my mother would, would take uh, the Star bus for CDTA to Colony Center. Well, the star bus, that was good because it arrived on time to take her. But then when she was at Colony Center, she'd have to give them about 45 minutes notice until they could run it through their system to pick her up. At least. She'd call me and say, Mark, come get me. I don't want to wait the 45 minutes. I'm like, then why didn't you call them 45 minutes before and then go meet the bus when it came to you? You know, it's like you it's have to. But she didn't. She was so impatient that I had to drop what I was doing and I had to go and pick her right. up and and then you know she had a call and cancel the star bus and stuff so i don't know may, maybe i could if i take my patient pills maybe i could be a driver for you <laughs> <laughs> well you wouldn't need it because you would know what time to pick them up and that's right and, uh, and I'd be the, you know i i'm probably the person who would just sort of put this back the seat down in my front my front seat back down and go to sleep until they were ready to leave <laughs> that works <laughs> In the fear that I'd be 10 minutes late. You could I do know that. that 10 you minutes know, seems we like a lot. talk you know, about a lot, like Mark minutes. says, yeah. we have a lot of politicians yeah. on, and there's so many government programs. It's just, I always feel that the people, like, like a nonprofit organization, really sh could and should fill the gap. I mean, there's what to talk about. I don't want to get political now, even with food stamps. Used to be people, churches and synagogues, you know, help people out with food. Most definitely. And instead, and now the government does it. So then people say, well, the government's taking care. I don't have to volunteer. Let them, but there, back to really you're thinking that, that there's senior help, you know, and again, just so many subsidies, and, you know, if there'd be more volunteers, and people are willing to volunteer, you know, it is beautiful instead of having government do everything, oh, you know, there's charity, let the government take care of these poor people. People are looking to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And some people love volunteering with children, and some people love volunteering with senior citizens, mm -hmm. and... You know, you have people that like to go pick up trash in the park. There's all different levels of volunteerism. And there's also people, you know, the, the seniors sort of gravitate towards someone that, they, that they've had a positive experience with. I exactly. So if they said, I like Johnny, and he took me, and he was very good, I want Johnny again for my next appointment. And then you have to disappoint them, saying, well, Johnny's working that day that you have your appointment. He's, you know, he can't come get you. 
But you know what? So, Dorothy is wonderful too. Yeah, and that's right. I can't say enough good things about the volunteers that we have. Oh, I'm, I'm not, they are that's absolutely I'm amazing them, though. You know. I, yeah, I mean, that's, I was worried about that in okay. the beginning. Okay. You know, it's like, oh, well, this person really likes this, per this driver and, you know, but they're equally happy with all the drivers that we have right now. You know, we, we have this uh, discussion with restaurants and tipping uh, and they want to roll it into the right do the seniors tip the driver? No, they're not allowed to. And the drivers are not allowed to accept no. the tip? No. Okay. So I mean, do you there's... find that they do something nice, like bake some cookies or bake something and give it to the driver and say thank you? Or in that realm, I don't know. I'm just asking. Because there's always an uncomfortable feeling when someone's doing you a favor and then... But they're not, you know, because the passenger know. is paying for the ride. Paying Jewish family services. Right. right? Okay. Well, you right. know, you take a so, cab ride, you give a little tip on top of whatever the fare is, and right. you know, even though you know that the cab driver is pretty much keeping the fare because he rented the medallion and right. whatever. But I'm just saying, right. you know, just in general, the human nature and the way the society is brought up. I mean, even people didn't like it when they took the tip, when they had no tipping at restaurants. Right. And in fact, now restaurants are doing away with the no tipping because uh, people were leaving the tips anyway. So there's a whole culture, there's a whole mindset right. in the culture. I'm not just saying one, your group is, is isolated, you know, right. I'm just saying it's just... I mean, on occasion I've had so. passengers like give me candy bars or, you know, <laughs> little tchotchke type things. I have one lady who gave me a very small menorah. Uh -huh. It was you know, like... You know, to show gratitude, yeah. just to show... Or they, they write knows. notes. You know, you know which is... Nice That's important. You know. But you do try to coordinate me two for one. Like you say, maybe they want to go to a show. There's a show at Proctor's, they're thrown out. And say, well, you want to go and you want to go, so why should they have two drivers? You know, exactly. Like, so that's also part of the coordination. Do you have an email yes. list that you, or a group list that you say, like a Yahoo groups that you say, oh, someone, someone's going to Proctor's, to see the Lion King. Does anyone else going to see the Lion King that can give someone a ride? And no. No, you don't do that. No. <laughs> but if it happens, then you figure you're two miles away. You're going to just go with some other person. Exactly. Instead of get two drivers. Is, is there a reason? Is it safety? Is there other reasons why? Well, you there's don't? confidentiality. I mean, people don't necessarily need to know what everybody else is doing. Right. I mean, if a passenger comes and says, "Oh," Can you see if anybody else is going? Yeah. I have 50 people, and most of them, being senior citizens, are not online. They're not? No. Okay. I know my mother There's, wasn't online. Yeah. She always wanted to be, but I wouldn't let her because then she'd really have a connection and attachment. <laughs> 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 I'd never get anything done. Uh, but my... Yeah. Uh, that's important to also, I mean, yeah. just saying that's an issue because is. the society is getting, I mean, just about seniors, it's just getting so internet or, you know, the people are saying don't even have, you know, cash money. I mean, it's almost like if you don't have a computer, or a, I mean, it's not up to that yet, right. but it is getting to the point where you're going to be isolated, you know. But well, I that's know. the problem with senior citizens right now is so many of them are isolated. Because you know, of the computers or things like that, they can't, yeah. you know, everything's in the headlines and just see it, you know. I know people are saying that. I mean, I, I of course, I've trained myself to be on Facebook because I know that's where everybody is. I got to also, I'll be well, where Well, if you want to see pictures are. of the grandchildren. Yeah, and, no. mm -hmm. But most of these people that they're, I would say probably 70% of my passengers are 80 and up. Uh -huh. Really? So they're, they're not so there. I think in another 10 years, it, we're going to see a huge difference because it's the baby boomers that are aging. And they're yeah. and acclimated they're, they're I was, to computers know, and emails. Exactly. And I was right. with, Mark, with my parents. They, were, they, they passed away in the meantime, but a good few years ago, they were in Florida, and that uh, synagogue, the Chabad house, what they belonged to, gave them a little, you know, the Purim flyer, and they'd mail right. it out. So my father was really wheelchair-bound, and he wasn't going to synagogue anymore. So when I came to visit him, he says, well, tell the rabbi that, I know we don't participate, but we still like seeing your literature. Don't cut us off the mailing list. So I went to the rabbi. He says, you know, my parents like to see your mailing list. Why are you cutting them off? He says, I don't want to cut off your parents, but I cut out the mailing list. I do everything <laughs> on email now. That's all saves me so much money. I mean, so, so there's just a regular story. Like right. my parents felt cut off because they didn't do email. And, 
you know, how much you click, email, you hit a button. I mean, for a nonprofit or for any organization, and here you have to print it up and mail it out, and save exactly. them thousands of dollars. But, it's you know, but in the meantime, if you don't have it, saving. you're lost over here. I, I used to uh, oversee dinners uh, in the Jewish community and ad journals and things like that. And I'll tell you, it was, you, you had to do a regular mailing, you had to follow up with a phone call, and then you had to remind them of an email, and then you had to do another phone call. People are just so busy and doing so many things that they don't always you know, pay attention. And how That's many, true. How many uh, passengers do you have? I mean, you, have eight, you have 16 drivers. Right. We have, right now we have about 50, 50 at this time. I mean, I have a huge file cabinet drawer full of people, um, but I don't know what happened to them. Either they've gone into a nursing home, could have passed away. Is your predecessor? Right. Okay. And, or they could have moved away, or they're just homebound and, and you not able to get out. You haven't put together an Excel spreadsheet to try to follow up with. I, you know, I'm just trying to keep up with what I have right now, okay. and with our is new executive. Is it a full-time position? No, it's part-time. How many hours? I'm there 20 hours a week. Okay, but do you pick up people from nursing homes, for example, or I mean, yes? So that's part of the. Uh, they won't yeah. give transportation so much or at all? Well, they, it depends on where they're going. I have one lady who's a daughter's of Sarah that she likes to go to Beth Emmeth. They have a lunch and learn program. Right. She likes going to the JCC for Yiddish lessons. I mean, she's very, very active. Yeah. So she's able to but get... But they won't do that for her? The home won't do it? I don't think so. It's interesting. I don't think... I mean, they need... Yeah. The problem is people need to be able to get in and out of a car on their own. That's right. So if someone that's in a wheelchair is not going to be able to do that. You know, I was just thinking once you said, you know, the new generation will be more co computer literate. On the other hand, to everybody's talking about, I mean, because it's just the statistics, the seniors are going to be booming. You know, those people, 70, 80, that they're just expecting that. They talk about Social Security, of course. Obviously, there's so many different facets, but right. just as one is, you know, senior citizen services, there's just going to be a boom in people. People are living also, you know, people say that someone told me that the biggest demographic of decades or the people, a percentage is the hundred and over. Didn't say as many people again as percentage. You know, now a hundred, right. you know, you see in bitch, oh yeah, 102, 104, four was, wow, someone read, that was headline news, wasn't it? They lived to a hundred, look at that, and now it's not well, commonplace. Well, it's Scott but it's, with, on the Today Show with exactly. the smokers thing, and you know, there were very few, you know, when it was a hundred, you know, when you reached a hundred, you know, he'd have you on mm -hmm. and have your picture and talk about what mm -hmm. you were doing. Now, I just I saw know. this woman in Brooklyn or in New York City died at age 116. I mean, you're getting yeah. closer to the 120. May you live to yeah, be 120. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're getting up there, and you might just have that. It's also yeah. because they're not that infirmed. Also, it's because medical advances. People are 90s. You know, that's kind of you know they're going to the JCC. They're jogging around, they're and they're jogging. 90s. They're you know, I mean, well, I had a lady up until six months ago. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with her now because I've lost contact. But she was 98 years old, and I was we were taking her grocery shopping every week. Yeah, and so she wanted to push the cart. She wanted to, yeah. she could walk, she, and she wanted to do it. Yeah, so yeah. you're going to get people, in the, I, you know, I go to JCC, oh yeah, a guy says next to me in the locker room just the other day, yeah, I'm turning 91, and he's working out, and, you know, and it's just very normal. So I guess your job yeah. is, you have... Uh, <laughs> uh, your just, job security? Yeah, <laughs> you know, coming up over here. Because, you know, well, it's one thing to walk around, but to go into a car... I mean, my mother also, I get just personally, that she was good. She needed a walker, but she was good and walking around. But, you know, she hit the brake. She wanted to hit the brake and hit the gas pedal. That's and very And she common. didn't, you know, hurt anybody. She said, but that's it. I'm not hurting myself or I don't want to hurt anybody. And even though she was with it, and yeah. she needed right. a little walker. So, you know, it's one thing to be with it and walking in a, in a grocery store. It's another thing of... Motor vehicle. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, you saw that in you know Brandywine Diner, I think, in Schenectady. Okay. Someone went through the side of the diner. People were eating at the booth. Mm -hmm. You know, other stores, the yeah. stewards and stuff. They go through the window. It's scary. And, you know, it's, that's 
one of the reasons why I like to stay away from Florida. I mean, there's such a high population of senior citizens, and <laughs> driving is terrifying. I, I, I love I love what you wrote here on the uh, on your website about what the how you got the five in Project Five. Oh, that's interesting. So tell us. It's the it's based on the fifth commandment. Oh, well, that's interesting. I never Honoring know. thy mother and father. I never even know that. I think that's and wonderful. And when I get a new driver, I tell them, I said, I like to treat them as royalty. Uh -huh. You know, I help them in the car. I hold the door for them. I close the door for them. I help them with their seatbelt if they need it. Okay. I do whatever I can to it's interesting. It's a beautiful make them idea feel honored. Because, you know, I know it's something because we're such a transient community. Like, say, people in Florida. My parents went to Florida. I mean, probably you can go to Israel, you can go to right. South Florida. But the truth is, it's just that I know what the Rebbe once said, the Lubavitch Rebbe, to quote him, and his father, while well, he was captured, and he was a rabbi, but under the communists, he was put in the gulag, and mm -hmm. the Rebbe it came to America, and that someone who came out later took care, you know, they, he says, in years past, he took care of my father. He says, he did the mitzvah of the commandment for me, which really I was obligated to do, and the Rebbe himself says, I don't know if I can ever repay him mm. for it. The Rebbe say, you know, for the Rebbe to say such a thing. You know, but that's really what right. you're doing. I mean, other people really, that is the commandment of taking care of your parents, that they should come going in and going out. Those are the simple words, but, you know, transporting right. them, you can make it nice English. And on the other hand, you know, um, you're doing it for these people. Maybe they're out of town or whatever. They can't, like you say, nine to five. There are people who have a job. They can't stop in the middle of a job. Exactly. Take your you know, mother here and there. And um, you're in place of doing an incredible mitzvah. And they, people want to remain independent. They don't want to have to sit around and wait for their son or daughter or niece or nephew to come and take them someplace. <laughs> No, you're you know, right. they, they don't want to wait till Starbucks, five, six o'clock at night. The Starbucks doesn't come take you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's important because, again, Mark and I, the politician, one of the big issues are is because senior care, and like it is, it's only going to be, unfortunately, a growth industry of just how much, right. you know, money social services is going to have to put out to, to help these seniors. But the more they can, you know, you have a person in a nursing home compared to a residential home assisted living right. compared to independent, it's so much more economical. But again, they do have, so you can't just, okay, sit in your apartment and just wither away. Exactly. They do need some services and, you know, you're providing them. So it's not only for helping these people out, but really helping out society, you know, just instead of just farming the way. And also, like you say, it's just even psychological, you can... You know, I meet people, of course, being a rabbi all the time. Some was independent, like you say, and just pushing their shopping cart, like you were gave the example. Hey, I'm still with it. I could do it. All right, I can't drive, but I'm still with it. I can hold my hand. You put a person in a nursing home, and within a good few fast. months, they're yeah. going downhill psychologically. Very true. All right, no wonder the people at Dota's of Sarah won't come on the show. I'm <laughs> teasing you. No, I hear things like that. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I joke, I jest, it's okay. Anyway, um, I noticed that prior to this position, you spent a lot of years in the medical industry. You were, you know, at St. Peter's Hospital as an information associate, and during that, about the same time, you were also a medical billing specialist, Capital Region Cardiology. Is right. that Egal's or Vicky? It is. Oh, okay, I know, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, but you spent a lot, you know, a couple of decades in doing both of those positions simultaneously. I did. You're very ambitious. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> It seemed to work, and you know, I, I enjoy working with senior citizens, and again, with the working in the business office for a cardiologist, you talk to a lot of senior citizens, and I help them through their insurance nightmares. Right. You know, dealing with Medicare and Medicaid and some of the Blue Crosses were awful. <laughs> you know, you know it's, it's, it's the truth. My sister's an oncologist, and you know, people are always saying, because cancer is like in the increase, she says, but that's also a problem with seniors. He says, I'll tell you the truth, though. I don't know how much it's increased, but it's like senior citizens. You know, they're 80, 90. So years have gone by, people didn't live till 80, 90. So right. you didn't see the cancer. They died of something else. Exactly. So now just you see a lot more cancer while they're the seniors. So 
the medical right. services, of course, is just incredible. I mean, like what you were doing, going to see doctor appointments. And then my parents also at the end, I go from one doctor to another doctor to this doctor and a that doctor. A regular person goes once a year, check up, an eye doctor, once right. every few years. But a senior, it's like every other day they're going to... It's their job. Mm -hmm. yeah. It becomes their job. It's the job to go see a doctor. It is. Yeah. And it's, you know, they don't hear good things all the time, so it's difficult. Yes. So it's nice to have someone who's a friendly ear mm -hmm. that they can speak with. And, and, and what was your experience at St. Peter, S. Peter's? Uh, I worked in the ER uh -oh. doing registration and unit clerking. Not good. So I <laughs> saw... Triage was, is, is the middle word there. In the I, ER. Yeah, I did triage too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, someone comes into the ER with, uh, you know, a, a broken fingernail, they're not going to be taken right away when someone else comes in with the heart exactly. condition. Exactly. It doesn't yeah. matter if you call an ambulance for it or not. Uh, no, it doesn't you know, matter. And priority is priority. That's right. And I've been, you know, because I've never really been sit by, I've been with friends who needed to go to the ER and their illness or what they were there for wasn't as uh, severe as what the other people were there right. for. So it was a six hour wait. <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the things that I also do with Project 5 is if someone has a doctor's appointment that trumps, no pun intended, um, <laughs> <laughs> that trumps a lunch date. Yes. You know, if, if you have to, that's what I'm saying, it must to be hard to coordinate, you know, you, it is. you got five people need a ride and four ride drivers, I mean, that's, I can imagine, just yeah. logistics problem. But, you know, just a little bit on another note that you were just saying about even psychologically, I mean, seniors are isolated a lot and, um, you know, they don't have friends or they don't get out so much, but just even probably talking to the driver, another friend, you know, they, exactly. you know, you have 10, 15 minutes talking with a person about nothing, you know, a doctor, you can't just sit there and schmooze right. it off or something, so you're going to her, so here it is, it's just another, hey, how you doing, and you know, just that friendly act is, you know, like I say, certain things are more valuable than, than diamonds, and just having a friend, we always say people, and a spouse, and a friend, it's not just money, and for a senior, just to, talk things over. Hey, how's everything? Did you see the headlines and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's, that's something valuable too, I think, for a, I also for recommend to my drivers, don't talk politics. <laughs> <laughs> no politics, no religion. And, exactly. And the third one doesn't matter well, at that religion point. is not so bad, because everybody's Jewish, but. <laughs> well, but it's so many different denominations and types that right. you just don't really want to bring it up and get into an issue. Usually, yeah. you know, pretty much everyone is pretty even keeled and, you know, you know so just like, you it's know. Hanukkah, it's Hanukkah, you know, say, hey, it's Hanukkah. What right, you right. but you say, right. oh, I couldn't take you out because it was Shavuos, and, well, I didn't, you know, I tell you, my best bosses well, were non-Jews. then non we have people that will do it. Right, but I, my best bosses were non-Jews because, you know, you showed them a Jewish calendar, you said, this is a holiday, they were like, hey, that's fine, no problem. The Jewish boss would tell me, what? I'm not taking off for that holiday. Why do you have to? Why are you so special? Just be, you know. That's I'm the wonderful taking... thing about working for Jewish Family Services. We get all those holidays oh, off. There you That's go. Right. <laughs> and you probably get some other ones too. You know. Mostly the Jewish ones, but. Well, but Thanksgiving, you probably have yeah. something. You yeah. Know, Thanksgiving, stuff, so. the the major, the major, major ones. Major. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Which is good. Uh, you know, I also you uh, you also taught at Beth Shraga Hebrew Academy. I, I did. Think. Okay, teachers aid, permanent sub. <laughs> Not a sub, was, substitute teacher. Right. right. And uh, how was that experience? Who was the uh, head of school there? Um, at the time... It was before Rami Strasberg? Yes. Okay. I'm trying to think. Grossberg? Um, or, nope, yeah. it was before. Okay. It's been a while. Okay. I don't, it was 02, yeah. It was, I don't uh, remember yeah. his and name. And then you also... Benji, Benji Cohen. Oh, and Benji Cohen. Hall, mm, I don't remember his name. Okay. Right. And then... <laughs> Close to my heart, you were also a house assistant with a SIPA. That was a million years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, but still, yes. I mean, 88 to 89, I was at the Capitol at the time, okay. and that's when a SIPA was really going through some of its major changes. Yes, so, it was, and, and that's why I was only there from 88 to 89. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a friend who, who worked there, and, uh, it was kind of, uh, the board was changing and everything, and they were setting things up in Troy at that time. And, that was and, uh, after. After a SIPA. After a SIPA. Yeah, yeah. They became NISTI after. Right, right. They went back to NISTI, I should say. But that's part of 
the issue right. with the seat of why they had why they transferred over yeah. and Pat Snyder and you know yeah and, that was Alyssa and Mark we're out of time but we're uh, no, listening I tell you you are well, such you are, you are a perfect fit I could just see you really are this so genuine for this for for the position that you're in and, and I just Thank wish you. you were there full time. So you got to figure out. I really out like being part time, though. You like being part time, okay? <laughs> well, you have a well, family. I'm You'll happy, take care of right? Them. I have small children, so I want to be home for them. Attempts. That's right. important. Liz, you're doing great work. Liz Mark is telling us, Thank keep you. on going, do the good work, and do it with good health. So good and any time you want to volunteer, let me know. I will. We'll <laughs> or anybody soon. else for volunteer. Exactly. Always looking also. for volunteers. Right. I'll get you an application. Continued success. <laughs> Thank you.